have you been in the military? Uh, 16 years now. 16 years. So you've never been to, to any training over here in the United States before? Uh, I've done training over here before, but not JRTC and not sort of a battalion level exercises like this. Okay, what's kind of your impression so far? You've been here for a couple of weeks now? Been here for a couple of weeks. I think the training is excellent. The uh, terrain is challenging. I think the in the environment makes it difficult enough without the, the OP4 out there as well. And it's, it's a real opportunity for us as a British battalion to embed within a US brigade and tease out some of the challenges of interoperability, both the human, the technical and the procedural challenges that are ever, that are in place and evident whenever we try and fight as a coalition. Speaking of you know human and technical challenges, um, what have been some obstacles that you guys have faced and how are you overcoming them? Um, we have very different communication systems, we have very different procedures for doing business, so just learning how to get over those hurdles, the exchange of liaison officers, the exchange of equipment, the exchange of pr or changing in processes to mesh them closer together that we can, so we can talk to each other, so our procedures are familiar to each other um, to enable sort of the flow of intelligence, the flow of just business and work and information. What are maybe some uh, differences in the training that you received back home and the training you're seeing right now? Most of our, our we have a similar training um, at back home, but we do it in Africa, we do it in Kenya. So the terrain is very different here from the hot, arid, dry training that we normally do. To come here in February and get cold and wet and everything else is very different. But also the scale, the scale of the uh, US JRTC with, with the scale of the OP4, the red air, and the resources available are far in excess of some of the training we do, which is focused main, mainly at the battalion level. Okay. And then, um, you know, what has been, you mentioned that you have several deployments in your belt and you've worked with American troops before. What were kind of your experiences with that in the past? Uh, experience is nothing but positive. Absolutely. They are our closest ally. We've worked as a coalition now for the past 20 years in Iraq and Afghanistan, and we're looking at that to, to continue. So I think going forward, we're really looking at opportunities to embed the British Army with the US Army and how we can work closer and get the integration ever closer still as we go forward and look forward to the future of the two armies integrating in a much closer manner. And speaking of you know, America being the closest ally that you guys have, uh, how important is it to have the opportunity to train together, get past some of the differences and learn to work together? It's not important, it's vital. If we don't train together now and get used to working to together, when we do deploy together, those hurdles just are ever higher. We need to understand each other's processes, understand what we can and we can't do, where those friction points are, and then have plans to resolve them and we're able to work them out. So it's absolutely vital to work together, as you'd want to do with any army before you deployed with them. And, um, you know, the technical stuff, the training stuff aside, I mean, getting to know the American troops, uh, maybe talking about different cultural differences and stuff like that, what's that been like? It's always interesting, but always a joy. The cultural differences are evident every time. I don't think they can understand my sergeant major or a word he says. And there's some of the US soldiers, I can't understand a word they say. So as long as we sort of, but with the right intentions, we get over those hurdles. And the cultural differences, they're there, but they're not so stark. You know, the language is similar. We sometimes talk past each other, but the language can easily be understood. And, and speaking of um, the language, you know, there are, there are a lot of differences between you know, your military and the United States military, but I imagine you know, still the language of the military has some similarities. You would think so, <laughs> but, uh, but it's been interesting to see how the different changes or how different it is. Within my battle group at the moment, I have a US Army company, my British battle group headquarters, but the greatest difference actually seems between, between my US Army company and my US Marine Corps, Anglico. And the, some of the, acro the um, acronyms and terminology they use need to be ironed out as well. So it's not just between our own militaries, but within the militaries as well. Different departments and different, different areas speak in different terms. So again, it's just going back to that working together, getting used to those, and ironing, ironing out those frictions before we actually have to do it for real. I know the goal right now is you know, to, to get the best possible training out of you know, your stay here, but are you having a, a good time at all, you know, being able to interact with uh, American troops? How can you not have a good time in woods like these? <laughs> <laughs> around the woods, the weather's been quite kind to us, but yes, it is, it's great training. It's a real opportunity to come out here. It's the first time a British battalion headquarters has been out and battle group has been out. We've only trained at the company level before, so this is a quantifi quantifiable step forward in the commitment from the UK in upping the level of training that's happening in JRTC and it's 
it is superb training and it is a good time. Okay, and is there um, any Op 4 equivalent in your military? There is. We have um, obviously one in Kenya at our Light World Training Centre and one in Canada in our Armoured Training Centre. But we pick battalions out and they'll do it for a sort of year, six months at a time. So it's a very similar process. But the resources that are available to, to them um, are slightly different. And we, we don't get to train regularly with Red Air um, and some of the IED components and some of the um, Red Artillery that's simulated here.